Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the vibe. Feel the groove, feel the vibe. You know where the party, yeah. You know what I'm said, I'm said, I'm said. It's your like your manager. Welcome back to another edition, another vibe, another chance to hang out with us. And today we are hanging out with us in a different way that you usually hang out with us. So, how are you guys doing? How was your week? How's your mom? How's your auntie? How's your sister? Most importantly, how are you? I don't know too. Um, today I'm joined by some cool guys. I thought it's imperative for me to bring cool people to the discussion, to the table, to the room. I'm here with the Tasha. Hi. Can I call you Tasha? Yeah, Tasha Natasha. Tasha Natasha, that's her name. Tasha, yeah. Tasha Natasha. Mm -hmm. Her parents <laughs> did an amazing job. Bambi's like a two. Imagine that part. Imagine your parents pulling <laughs> Natasha. Natasha. <laughs> Natasha. Ziakala, <laughs> and once again, I'm joined by the beautifulest Noma, our co-host, who was here the last time, is here this time. Yeah, boy, Again, yes. to bring the vibe, to bring the things that makes the pose to be done, Baba. Hi, Noma, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome, welcome, Tatenda. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. And unfortunately, we are here with our brother, <laughs> Javengwa. <laughs> <laughs> right, the laugh is too much now. <laughs> 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 Yo, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcoming Davengwa <laughs> on to our panel this week. Mm -hmm. How are you, my brother? Are you okay? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm partaking in your laugh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, did, did, did this one, that's the vibe, I don't know. Eh? Ah. 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 Davengwa is a good friend of mine, and I thought it was essential for him to finally show his face. We've been working on the vibe. We've been bringing the vibes to the vibes. So I thought it was essential for you guys to also know him as Dabengo. Dabengo, what would you like to say about the vibe? Do you know what? There's no Dabengo here. Some people call me, you know, Andrew or something. It's all right, but, uh, you know you don't have to talk close to the microphone. I will come. I will come chat to you. Yeah, it's okay. You can talk like you can relax. Coach him, talk to him. I think you you do the thing. Not to what more shall coach you. Not to a copy. But as compound, you don't have to talk into the mic. It's right. Chill out, man. Relax. It's the vibe. The first time. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I thought it would be a great space for us to kind of open up a bit about our culture, about us as South Africans. We're all South Af Southern African here. And um, I feel like we haven't really had spaces where we get to engage and speak about different life experiences. Um, from my understanding, I think all of us have grown up in the UK. I think we've had some life at home, but I think it's also essential for us to kind of touch base on some of our life before our life here so not only are we just going to be speaking about southern africa we're going to be speaking about a few other things connecting southern africa to this talk here music fashion art uh general stories a lot a lot of things are happening a lot of things are happening um but yeah we're here for it um actually first thing on my mind there was this thing a few weeks ago about miss universe a white girl. Yeah. Yeah. Zimbabwe, isn't it? Ah, yeah. You saw it. <laughs> I saw that. I'm that was so... amazing. It was amazing? It was amazing. Yeah, but there's a, a lot shock. of there's a lot of backlash because people are mad that but why is she white and representing Kabe. us? Why her? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, the same Kabe chased all the white people. They're like, oh, is she does she live in Zimbabwe? She, she does. In Zimbabwe. She does. The mayor of Burawa. The white guy. Oh, oh what's, really? What's happening? Yeah. yeah. What's oh, happening with all this stuff, though, about this um girl that's won 
So from my understanding, um, which I find very interesting, is that she apparently was um, somebody came to her and asked her to take part in in the competition. Um, and she, of course, then went on to win. Now, people are not mm. happy that it's a white woman who will be representing Zimbabwe on a global stage. Mm. So what happens is the winner of some of these pageants, in this case, Miss Universe Zimbabwe, will be going on to compete with the rest of the winners across the globe uh, for Miss Universe. Mm. Now, the question is, should Miss Zimbabwe Universe, in this case, be represented by a white woman? Considering Zimbabwe is, of course, a black country or African uh, country, um, it's and considering the history, I think this is where the point of contention is. Considering our history as Zimbabwe, considering colonization um, and the way the country is now, with the way we were treated and how things have gone, mm -hmm. should a white woman be representing us, representing our beauty, representing our culture, and standing in? in that space of Miss Zimbabwe. But why can't she not? I guess, again, with... Sorry, I... can everyone else hear that? Okay. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you might wanna put that on silent. Hey, Tami Ingwa. Hey. <laughs> but why, why what's the like why not though what's the i mean i'm i'm not for it i'm not against it i do think though it's a calculated move from the event organizers because potentially in the past miss zimbabwe universe who's gone on to compete on the global stage hasn't progressed to the to, the, to the winning yeah to, yeah to the winning stages whether that's the first princess second princess or the ultimate title which is queen so in my opinion and from how i look at it it looks very strategic um and it's again and i think it's quite telling that she was headhunted to compete i think it's very strategic in the sense that they do want someone who may be able to go further in the global competition and potentially win miss universe but what's wrong with having a white African be the face of Zimbabwe? You know, I think as Africans, it's important for us to embrace each other, whether we are brown, yellow, white. Because, I mean, the, the Zimbabweans that I'm sure pay, yeah, were there as well when things were like that. And they were also, some of them are still there when things are like this. Right. She's still African. What, what's the big deal? Whether she's black, green, pink, mm -hmm. she's still Zimbabwean. I don't that, really I... see a, a bad thing about it because at the end of the day, it's not like they've changed the country back to Rhodesia. And all the way from Rhodesia, we have this princess. Yeah. Oh, she's like Zim. I get as, it. As, as someone that's from like SA, mm -hmm. if we had, if you had... And I think maybe you've had like a white person represent. We've had white, white Miss South Africans. Right. So I, for me personally, I just don't see the big issue about it because yeah. we've had that before right. already. For me, it was more of a shock that there is a white Miss Universe in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've in my memory, if my memory serves me right, I haven't seen it before. Yeah, I haven't seen it before. So for me, that's why I say it's amazing because I was a bit in <laughs> awe that there's a white Miss. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I but mean, yeah, but I, I, I only found out this two days ago. So I don't really have much of an opinion because I haven't been reading into it like that. But for me, I never saw it of a big issue. I think for us, really, the problem here, dear Zimbabwe, is that I think we're not used to change. Robert Mugabe was in charge for over 30 something years, but so change is not really, we don't like change. Yeah. So when something is now different, it's now. Do you know also, what? can I say something? Yeah. Right. We don't like that. You know, with certain sports, cricket, hockey. If you look, hockey, cricket, and all these cricket uh, and uh, you know golf. Most of the athletes, they're always white. <laughs> you know, in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe right? Yeah. In Zimbabwe. <laughs> no, seriously. Oh, yeah. Zimbabwe. They all yeah. Those are the money. Swimming. The money. Those ministry, are the money. Sports. Ministers for sports, whatever. She's white. Kirsty Coventry. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they, yeah they, these elite sports where you go to certain schools, right? These schools obviously, 
you know, that, that's where you, you train, you know, different mm-hmm. things. But um, you've got access. They normally why? Yeah. So, so yeah, they normally is. So but the, the is thing is, it's um, it, obviously, a lot of uh, people outside Zimbabwe in Africa, mm. they don't understand we we have that. There's a uh, classism. There's you know. Yeah. You you know um, if you go, for example, if you go to a certain school, your accent is different. You speak different English. Not only that. You now actually qualify for um, if you do uh, a certain uh, you qualify for Cam- Cambridge. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 No, no, you yeah. do, no, do you do know Cambridge. What? Yeah, Cambridge University qualifications, yeah. or if you public school, yeah, you do. You know. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like in the sense of that, it's always what I found interesting. So when you go to Zimbabwe, someone say, "Oh, which school did you go to?" in terms of uh, whether that's college. And in a way, they because of the school you went to, they automatically put you in a certain category, in a certain mm-hmm. box. Mm-hmm. So again, what you're saying is valid in the sense that it's interesting that in a country where majority of our people are Black, are African, how is it that on a global stage we are being represented, for instance, in cricket, um, which is, you know, it, it usually with, with the Zimbabwean team, they usually go to the top, if I'm not mistaken. How is it that majority of the team is white? Why is it that we don't have our people within those teams? And like you're saying, it's because they are not going to certain schools. They're not attending the um, the private schools which are paid for and the schools that a certain class of person would attend. So back to the question of why is it an issue for people? It's not about her being white, but it's about the context and the history of Zimbabwe of the fact that so much of our country, our resources, our riches were stolen at the hands of white people. And now it feels as if the opportunities that belong to black women, that belong to a Zimbabwean woman, that belong to an African woman are still being stolen and taken away by a white woman. That's where the point of contention is. Yes, we've progressed and yes, we've come into a space where we're all happy, hunky-dory, you know, we're multicultural, we accept everybody. But it's, again, the history plays plays an important role here. I think the most... I'm important... Zimbabweans are the trauma, so... Yeah. Okay, sorry. The most important thing is a lot of people is still... Say, it was about the surprise. Oh, mm. We've chased out all the, the white people. Huh? Why are they still white people? <laughs> Why are they still white people in Zimbabwe? That was it. That's, people are so, like, right. Yeah. The mayor of Bulawa... Is white. Is a white man. And I don't think that's an issue. Because I saw no, something saying, as well yeah. the other day where they were asking if he wanted like his mayor. You know, these mayors have these cars and stuff. And I think he refused to have a car because of the amount of um, engine, fire engines, ambulances and stuff that Zimbabwe has. So he was like, no, it doesn't make sense for me to be having this thing um, given to me and how the country doesn't even have enough resources. Yeah. Um, I don't think he did a Boris Johnson thing where he was like, he's going to have a bike, but I think he's just going to keep the car that he has. I saw something like that. I don't have like full facts. But yeah, like, hey, bruh, Zimbabwe politics. So I'm not really here for that. I'm joking. I care for it. But hey, guys, I was going to ask, actually, Andrew, is it better for you to come in the way? <laughs> you are so shady. You're very shady. <laughs> but also, <laughs> the, no, I'm in the English. <laughs> 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 and one Who's your audience? The audience, the audience is everyone. But exactly. we have to find subtitles. <laughs> he has one target today. We out here. We out here. I got your wrong because I know, hey, the English. It I'm not a shy, it's science, everything. Go talk, talk about, about English. Ah, fit. What happened? I love that day. <laughs> but, but I can't remember. You wasn't in class that day. So, guys, um, I so I, I grew up in England, right? And growing up in England for me has been cool. Um, but before I grew up in England, I, I, I started my life in in South Africa, 
where I then moved to Zimbabwe, where I think I really had no. So how do I say this? I was raised in Zimbabwe, but I grew up in England. Yeah. So let me put it that way. So in terms of basing this conversation on Southern Africa, I wanted to kind of see if we have any similarities, not just amongst the four of us, but I'm sure with other people as well, about how we grew up and um, just the process of transitioning from growing up in Africa and being in this amazing space. When did you come to England? So I came here 10 years ago. Mm. Most of my life, I was at home. Mm. Um, and I was born in Durban. I was the anomaly of the family. So born in Durban, but I moved to Eastern Cape for a short moment of my life. Whoa. My family is from Eastern Cape, but we grew up in Manfre. So from Manfre, we moved back to Durban and yeah, lived a suburban life. Jeez. Uh, yeah. So this is where the Tosa and the Zulu yeah. comes in line. Yeah. So what are but you, my family, Zulu? My family is Tosa and Sotho. Right. Yeah, but my dad's side is Zulu. But that's just the side I'm not in touch with. So I just grew up in my mom's side of the family, which is Kosa and Sutu. Mm. Yeah. Ten, ten years is quite fresh though. So you're like, you were you were you were my figures all though. Basically. In a way, <laughs> but not really. Yeah, you were in a way, but not really. Ten years is all. Yeah. Ten, ten years you is have the accent. <laughs> You and my, and my piano accent, are like though. this age. You, you know, it's almost <laughs> 2013. Yeah. 2013. 2013. Yeah. World Cup time. So you guys, oh. you lost, you win. Yeah. Yeah. When did you come to England? Um, I was 2005. Wow. No. Yeah. 2005. Um, I was about 12 years old. So wow. you do the math. Mm, so it's mm. been a minute it's been a minute I've been in this country born in Zimbabwe uh, the beautiful beautiful Zimbabwe that I love and I miss so much mm. and then moved over here did secondary school here and the rest of my education amazing Dabengwa oh. <laughs> guys two weeks ago you came <laughs> I just arrived I just arrived fresh off the boat guys. no 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 guys <laughs> I've been trying to do the English accent for, for, for 15 years. It didn't work out. <laughs> so you've been here 15 years? Is it two, 2007? <sighs> Bruh. I come here with the vest. It was March. Bruh. In March? I didn't know. Eish. I come here in February. You learn. Oh, check Charles. You better Charles. Yeah. Leather jacket. Mm hmm. Like today, he's the same leather jacket. <laughs> That's your world. Well, yeah. I had to represent. It'd be like that. Represent for your people, dog. Right. What was summer when I, when I left? Kemi was wind. Oh. So what could I do with Yeah. What's the Lo location? What's the location? What's that? So there was a cocoa by a kinder. What is, what is it, though? Like, no, no. Look at it. Right. Um... Location is I the other up. part of the yeah. suburbs. So, how do you, how do you, how do you <laughs> other side? Look at yeah, this, how do right? you explain what location is? Yeah, look at this, right? Um, back in uh, Southern Africa in general, right? There's either uh, there's either places where there's white people, you know, mm -hmm. or black people. Mm -hmm. That's how it was. Uh, that, that's how it was. And then after that, um, where the black people are. Is the location. Lokshi. Right. And after that, um, hey, some of us, we, we used to love quite too much. Mm. That's where I grew up. That's where I love all stars. Mm. You know? The influence. And that influence stems from South Africa. Of course. But uh, Maluma, yeah. Yeah. So keep up my fire. Like every time I'm out with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Tells the whole story, <laughs> family history. Uh, every, time I'm I'm out, out, every time I'm out, every time I'm out, no, on the other hand, like, no, no, you're South African friend, but you you Zimbabwean though, hundred percent. In the show, but why do you think you're South African? He reps as he more than Zim this Oh, yeah. good, yes, him. Grow up on it, look <laughs> <laughs> No, I guys, please. Let let's be professional for two seconds, I'm trying to hear the story, please. 
What happened? Okay, I don't know. I am cutting you off. <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking you off your own podcast. Oh, oh, Go on, carry on, Devin. We're listening. So, where did you grow up in Zeb? Dumbani. Okay. Oh, see, see. Ah, well, guys, <laughs> can we just, guys, time is ticking. How long do we have left? Let's go, let's go. And Dumbani. Now I have to. And Dumbani, I'm Ziliga. Okay. Okay. Oh, I grew up in Northern too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then I Northern also grew up in suburbs. I, I also grew up in Ghetto, so I had that, you know, the mix of the, yeah, the low income ghetto, as they would call it, and also the. More, I guess, high income, middle class areas. Mm. So now you've you've arrived in the UK. How was your process adapting to life in the UK? Mm. Um, but I mean, obviously, we're not my figures all up. Um, it's a bit interesting, I think, on your side because a lot of things had developed by the time you arrived here. Two thousand and five, we were still getting gisty of things. But how was like your? How was your? settling in into into UK at, at at 12 years old? Um, It was interesting. I wouldn't say there was a culture shock. Um, The only thing I did expect, though, was, you know, the big houses. I think the mm. misconception I had was yeah. that the UK would be like America, which is the TV we've been watching mm-hmm. and seeing and mm-hmm. American media is what we um, ingest, essentially. Mm. So when I came, I'm like, hey, well, guys, why is... Everything so choked up. Why is the tiny little house next? Just a row of houses, rows and rows and rows. Where's the play areas? Where's mm. the greenery? Where's mm. it's just a concrete jungle? And mm. I wasn't and so that's the used London, to that. They never showed us on the TV. Right? Yeah, that's the London you don't see. Mm. Um, but I think in terms of my transition, it wasn't difficult. No. But I think looking back now, a part of me because it was such a it's a big it's a big transition. Yeah. Um. And, you know, sometimes leaving family behind, leaving friends behind, coming here, you're moving into secondary school. There's a cultural difference in the way things move. Mm. There's no sun. Yeah. Um, and I, I probably emotionally blocked out a part of that in my life, but we're not getting deep. At 12, you were in year seven. Year seven, yeah. So I came here, started year seven. How so did I you left. react when someone first called you an idiot? They didn't call me an idiot because I was smarter than them. <laughs> No, I was I'm I'm a I'm a smart woman. Um so they okay. wouldn't have called me that. I mean I... the only thing I did ah. experience was ah, ah, ah. what? Let her talk. Yeah, no, I I, I I I moved into a very multicultural area. So by the grace of God there was blacks, whites, Asian, and yeah, it was great. No, the reason I say that. I, I just thought it was a normal thing amongst us, but <laughs> <laughs> not what, yeah. what, what was it's your experience? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 tell us about your experience. I mean, I arrived here, and the same thing. It was a culture. It wasn't a culture shock, but it wasn't Mr. Bean. It, the Mr. Bean <laughs> I used to see was yeah. not the London I came to mm-hmm. already when we first came. Like when our situation started, you know, living in like temporary accommodation, it was really like. Not not to what I was seeking asylum, okay? <laughs> Nothing like that. Nothing like that. That's, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> but but no, it, it wasn't as comfortable wasn't, as what you were used yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> like we arrived, you know, like it was six of us, one house. It was dead, Ibab. Yo. Yo. Like, yo, six of us, one house. <laughs> one so bedroom, Ibab. It wasn't a joke. That's E6. So we've gone from <laughs> from cool. from living a good life, like the, like land, Baba. You know, yes. living. I mean, I never used to go out. So within the gate for me was enough. That was enough for me to just you know enjoy. But when I came here, it was like none of that indoors. PlayStation. Happy for the PlayStation. Oh. Never had one. Great. Like, so I came here when I was ten, but I, I was just thrown into that. And even when I left Zim, I was told I was going on holiday. So one, oh, wow. I'm coming with six people, boom. <laughs> Next week, I'm starting school, boom. <laughs> so ching oh. I'm starting school. <laughs> I know what happened. Oh, wow. Shout out to my parents. A lot happened. I'm starting school. And as I'm starting school, Kwampana, it's crazy because <laughs> wait, wait, first wait. week, 
He first said, week. I drew tears. He said, tears. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. saying. First week. <laughs> so, um, okay. Let me tell you, first week, Chiggy Chig, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> you're an idiot, man. What, what caused that? What happened? I don't know what I said to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, 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 and what was crazy was our house was just next to the school. So after school, ah, you know, how was school? Ah, but thing, idiot. <laughs> At the time, I didn't know it was like a swear word or like a, you know, like you yeah, know, whatever it was. I didn't know, but that was just like your first couple years, and then eventually, you know, we moved on. And couple and, years. Okay, not sorry. That was like the first four weeks of being in London. I yeah. was already called an idiot. We used to live in Wolverhampton at the time, <laughs> and yeah, I was just like, but you know, a lot of a lot of things were very much interesting and then I, I moved and then we went to another place and when I went there the process of well I mean my English has always been ex- spectacular English you know what I'm saying a colorful English it's been <laughs> no no she one no not that one I've never been located. I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, shouts all my locationers. So I, I, can't relay, I can't relate. I can't relate. I love that for you. Nah, like, respectfully, I've always wanted to go a location, but location, I've never really, like, shout out to my parents. Um, I've I've gone to, you know. So location is the I ghetto for anyone ghetto. who doesn't know. Yeah, but let's not call it ghetto. Let's call it location. I mean, as long as it's Auckland. It is, it, it is what it is. So, okay, I, I then moved to another school. I moved to another school. And, and now where the danger was, was when I thought I was pronouncing things accordingly, successfully. So, you know, ah, can, who can say this word? Ah, comfortable. Management. Yeah. And that was not the case because everyone was like, say that again. <laughs> comfortable. Obviously, going to tina singe na masile pu pele. Comfortable. We say it how it is. Mm-hmm. We say it how it's spelled. But to the English, it's not that it's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I had that transition of learning how to say words and getting into the lingo and just adjusting to the to the thing. For me, I enjoyed growing up in Zim. Like I, I, I secretly missed the life. Oh. Because my life, respect my parents and shout out to them for that. They didn't make it. I think I was just living in a cloud. So I wasn't aware of how bad things really were outside. Yeah. You had a but comfortable upbringing. Not comfortable. It was okay. Okay. I never used to eat. If we're talking comfortable, I never used to eat bad boys try it. Oh. And I started eating ah, ah. that at 21. <laughs> so you were comfortable. <laughs> it sounds like you were comfortable. Yeah. But I feel like there's a part you, of that transition. You know, a lot of shedding at that time. Nah, nah, we were Barely. But I feel like at that point, though, Zimbabwe wasn't that bad in terms of load no, shedding. everyone kind of got the same memo. I think 99, 98, 99, 2000. Early 2000s. Everyone it was got like, the memo leave. It's yeah. time to go. Yeah. So I think I was part of those that got the email. So I don't know yeah. if you guys got it because you came later. Guys, uh, well, there's no email in uh, guys, a bit. <laughs> uh. the, the email didn't reach the location. <laughs> no, serious. We used to still fucking ask for... We used to still <laughs> ask for... <laughs> no, 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 no. We used to still ask for salt from our neighbours. Mm. Why don't you just go to the shop and oh. buy it? Oh. <laughs> Don't you just go shop, buy salt? Why you got to ask the neighbor? Because not man? everybody was I comfortable, to, Pele. Like when I used, you, you were eating rice I used to ask my neighbor to do my time. Right. My neighbor helped me make my first time. That was a shock. That's but really listen, cute. Tell me something. When, uh, oh no, actually, on the ladies first, because I'll go to the be here for three days. <laughs> You came to 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 um UK ten, 10 years, years ago, ago yeah. like you're fresh after World Cup vibes. What so was that like? It was a shock. At some point, I considered going back home. A lot of South Africans that come here are very unhappy. Yeah, um, that's why me, we don't have a lot of South Africans in London. It makes sense because if no, if you your have, stuff is great right at home, why would I that's come? True. Word. Um, I didn't realize the meaning of privilege. Up until I left home. Mm. Um, Same. Bearing in mind, Ekaya, like, we were broke. We weren't rich, but we were never Same. poor. Same. You know, we were just broke, and we were living off of one person, which is my mother, who carried us through the whole family, a family of 11 in one house. Ekaya. Wow. Yeah. Working here, 
Oh, she was working she's here work, yeah, she was working and taking here, care of powering you. Powering us through Ekai. Wow. So she managed to like sustain a lifestyle that I myself, if I think about it now, I don't know if I could do it. No, but she managed to get me through um, private school, Ekai. Um, and then obviously like from private school, I went to Durban Girls and stuff like that. Um, but also we lived a Christian life. So it wasn't just about culture, like South Africa, it was about Christianity. So I lived a very preserved life. I was a very much a church girl and everything. So moving from a church-based family, coming here to everything being minimized and also Ekaya, because of church, we are limited to what we watch. So the only thing I knew of the UK really and truly is either the music or the Victorian films. So I had that expectation of Victorian, but not obviously like back in the day. It was yeah. more like the buildings and memorials and stuff like that. So it was a huge culture shock for me. For a good three years, I did not know anyone from home. I, wow. Yeah, no one from home. Um, where did you? I, where did you learn? Where did you learn? Uh, I lived in Battersea. Oh, right. I lived in Battersea, and uh, it was just mostly family and wow. college and stuff like that. And then my friends were internationals. Okay. Yeah, not even Nigerians, Ghana, none of those people. The real international. international. Yeah, the real international. Because yeah. for me, I felt more relatable to them. Mm. North Koreans. <laughs> not the North Koreans. <laughs> so, like, European, yeah, Asian, European, literally, Asian. Literally. So, I was like, yeah, man, this might not be it for me. I might just go home. Then my mom introduced me to her friends from work that were from home and their kids and from there onwards things developed from me in regards to the South African scene mm -hmm. um, and yeah I found a comfort that I was I immediately got addicted to because at home you know I had family and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah. you know and that was a comfort an immediate comfort so mm -hmm. the minute I found someone from home or friends from home I just Catched and never left and i understood why now internationals are so attached to people that they're that are from their yeah, country yeah, because it's not hard to just yeah settle in. so that you're saying it took you about three years for took you me to, a while yeah. to settle into london yeah it took me a few years wow. otherwise i would have gone back home straight wow um, funny enough yeah. right for me it took me six months <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it was, it wasn't <laughs> I was just chilling there, right? Wait, six my months is not bad, though. No, no, my coco, um, cool. She's like, ah, hey, Yazin, I feel like you have to go back home. Like, why? Ah, every time, you know, this is how you move, you forget to. Every time, we're going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I said, ah. mm. You're always talking to your guys back home, your friends. Mm. It's like you're more excited yeah. when you're talking to friends back home. Here, ah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. That connect, home. I feel like that connection back home when it's missing yeah, well, a part of yeah. you just it's hard to truly settle into the place because you're like your heart is still back home, so uh, your mind is here but your heart is just still home. So it's hard for you to just you know get Andrew, on with it. When you um <laughs> sorry Davengu, when you first came to London, with what did you, what school did you go to? A white uh no, I went to, to college, isn't it? Where? Straight to college. Oh, okay, straight, straight into college. Yeah. Okay. So and when you went into straight into college, ah, oh, but then college is different because it's not like school where you're no, no, no. Mm. mingling with other kids yeah. and stuff. College is like Ndoda's does bonnet. Yeah. Right. Bro, at least back home, I can never admit maybe I was in, I literally I have never been chased out of school and expelled. It was nice. But <laughs> the main thing is so did you get chased out of school here? They never expelled me. They just chased you out. I don't say anything. What did you do? <laughs> Lalil, it's all... <laughs> no, but like, you can't drop a bomb and then not expect us to, yeah, to want to know. Sorry, follow follow her her no, yeah. look. Uh, it wasn't me. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. 
Because someone actually was that. Uh... Okay, there was someone, right? Who actually, um, some reason they were smoking something <laughs> and they started assaulting a, a guard. Half of them. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, uh, description one of them were high. Uh, it looks like a guy that died. So it was a case of mistake and false identity. I'm fresh in English. I can't even speak English. So uh, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really intrigued at how you first engaged with someone that was already here. How, how, what was the name of the first person you made friends with? Oh shit! See, it was my uh, my, my grandma had to actually push me to mingle. Yeah, oh. yeah, it was Cause like because uh, uh, my grandma has so many relatives, mm. Mm. and I had these relatives, bro. Hi, yeah, why I don't know them. They are black. Yeah, ah, some Martica. of them. Yeah, they're from yeah, Nigeria. But, uh, they're everywhere. No, they're not. But, yeah, she's like, oh, okay, hey, uh, these are these. Because mm. she was so worried about me, like, ah, you're just chilling at home. Mm. You know, so you were alone when you first mm-hmm. came? Yeah, I came in, and then after that, and then, well, you know, ah, that's the maybe second, third day I saw you. Oh, really? So when I, when, when the time... Before I met you, that was, that, that, was, that wedding, bro. Oh, so you would have been here. You'd, you'd been here about two years. Yeah. So I knew I knew Davengo before he knew me because I did this aunt's wedding back then when we used to dance. Like yeah. I used to be a machaivana, guys. In case you're wondering, <laughs> I used to be a boy pen. <laughs> didn't work out. It is not that it didn't work out. I grew out of it. How was it? Different, different story. But yeah, I, I was in a boy band, guys. A dance band, if you if you may call it. But yeah, as he's, much only, as... he's only saying that because he's a he's still a ma pansula, so he's grading me as a pansula dancer, and I was Fair. just reliving the life that I used to live. He still is, still a, well, still a rock star, rocking. I mean, are, are we no, it, are we going to ignore the fact that as much as we talk about some of these experiences, like? It's low key traumatic. Not to take it there, but some of these experiences are sounding a little bit traumatic to me. No, to be honest with you, let me tell you something. The nice thing about about the whole thing, mm-hmm. at first, everyone else, it was like, okay, you come here, you feel like, oh shit, being in African wasn't a thing. At the time, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool. At the time. Every, yeah, you go to carnival. I can't relate. No, no, you go to carnival, hey, no, no, you start acting. Like to me, can no, I can't no, relate. I'm just saying, Surely, what for me, me in school, did you not have Africa versus Caribbean battles? Did you not want did, it, it, did people maybe people uh, probably even thought no, you were Jamaican? No, you were never in school, I think, because a maybe fledged African. I was always in secondary school, not till about yet. No, because college, okay, surely. maybe it's a age difference thing, no shade, but maybe it's an age difference thing because <laughs> for me, <laughs> oh. no, no, let me explain. Let me explain. I you know why I say that because for me, right when I when I came here, it was I went into a multicultural school. Majority, not even majority, but it was very um, diverse. There was the Africans, and the Africans were very proud to say I'm African. What and not did you only go to? I went to a school in uh, East London. East London, that's why. Uh, void. So yeah, so void, void, void. So so that's what I'm saying. Though. Pakistan. No, 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 not at all. Hundred percent. No, listen, 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 listen. What I'm trying to say is that by the time I came to the UK, thankfully the Africans were. Um, embracing their culture, they were saying, I'm Nigerian, I'm Zimbabwean, I'm from Uganda, I'm mm. from Somalia. So I don't remember a time where people were pretending to be Jamaican or Caribbean. I've heard those those stories and I'm not discounting it, but, but thankfully for me, my experience was it's okay to be yourself. Wow. No matter the space you're in, it's okay to be yourself. The one experience I did have, which I found interesting was in year seven, me saying, oh, I'm Zimbabwean. And this white girl saying to me, oh, how come you can speak English so great? Yes, yes. Which really and truly, if I was to answer you, it's like, oh, babe, your people came to my country to steal and take and to colonize us. That's why I speak English so well. 
Do you know what I mean? Right, right. So I say all of that to say, thankfully, I could just really be myself and just say, oh, I'm Zimbabwean. This is our culture. This is how it is. Because I'm in a class where there's maybe 10 black kids, five Asian kids, and the rest are white. Mm. Guys, at one point I was calling it semi-sexual. <laughs> but, look, I heard at the time, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but that's not bad. No, no, no. I mean, that's I'm cool. Like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm serious. I'm confused. No, they like, tell me, say, because they're born. How did you get there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm, try- I'm, I'm telling you, okay, what happened, right? It's like, oh, okay, ah, look at this semi sacred guy from Africa because it was no, because I had to, no, uh-huh. no, what was it? <laughs> No, guys, please. Please. I'm trying. Because what? No, guys, when I came here, I didn't know you have to go to a black barber to do shit. Right? <laughs> after that, this guy, right? <laughs> when's, when's his salary? Your hairline was landing. I'm not saying it was Turkish, I'll never say that. But for some reason, he did have, you know, a lot of. And then uh-huh. next thing, God. Then I went first first day in school. I'm, I'm, I'm first. <laughs> He messed up your Came they, they're like, ah, oh. like, oh, where's the management? They're like, ah, oh. what? <laughs> and I have to call the, well, I tell you, yeah, what, my management? And then, because obviously, yeah. the accent is too mm-hmm. strong. Hey, too. They're like, ah, oh, the semi guy. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> seeing the, like, ah, oh. the semi guy. But now I see it, though. You still got the semi thing going on. <laughs> no, but tell me, like, um, me. If we if we compare um, school back in Africa versus to I don't know so did did you oh, do school here? I have a lot here? to say about that. Yeah, but did you do school here? Because you came ten years ago. I did. I don't want to calculate your age now. I don't want people to calculate. <laughs> However, <laughs> <laughs> however, <laughs> when I came here, I felt like um, the British youth or kids, youth and kids, are very disrespectful. Oof. Child. Very different. Like I, I was so overwhelmed with the difference of discipline, respect that I was used to, than here. Um, it got to a point because I have a sister who's born and raised here. Right. I saw a reflection of UK in her oh. at home. I couldn't relate. I could not relate at Cause, all. Because you were very much. Discipline. <laughs> <laughs> and the church, church yeah, influence. Church girl, <laughs> discipline, you don't talk okay. back, you don't raise your voice, none of that. Yeah. You just say yes, okay. Sorry. That yeah. That's it. Mm. So when I saw the contrast of that in my own home as well, it was just a lot to take in. Already moving in, Jay. I'm just seeing a lot of mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Hectic. Um, but over time, I learned to just accept that, okay, do you know what? It's a different country. Different countries have different cultures and different, you know, stuff. Yeah. 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 I didn't like it, though. I didn't like it at all. No, it's, um, it's an interesting one because I think, Uti, um, if I think back at the education system in Africa, or oh, Southern Africa, or Zim, should I say? Because I went to school in in Zim. I did my primary school in Zim till I think I was in grade three or four mm-hmm. before I came to London. And the way we were taught there, um, we got dear social worker, we got abused. <laughs> yes, they hit us really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and. <laughs> And our teachers were very violent. They made you to make us do this. And then they <laughs> take the chalkboard. <laughs> and they hit us with the chalkboard. Yeah. In Wait, winter. Bring, yeah. bring your hands so I can yeah. demonstrate. Like, like this. Yep. In winter. No. And then I'll, I'll do this. And then, I'll, and then you say, hey, hey, don't move your hand. And then I have to hold my hand. And then move it. I got and, the and, pipe or the ruler. You know the thing? I, ruler. The ruler. I got that or the pipe. Oh. Not even that. Oh, there was the this Mr. Joe. It was this Mr. Love. You know when a man takes his art serious. Mr. Love was a <laughs> Mr. Love was a mess teacher, man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't play with him. Imagine now, social worker, <laughs> a rapper, a hosepipe. You know the Zimbabwean hosepipe, the black one. He used to cut it into art, and it becomes a, a 
a string and gaga so. Yeah. That's the whip. That's crazy. The other bit is the hand. <laughs> Do not get your times tables wrong. Because of that man, not that my times tables are great now, <laughs> but at that time, they were good. That thing, Baba. Imagine, that's the, I'm not talking sex whips. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a real life one, this one. Mr. Ndogu was not playing games. Bear in mind, I was, I was eight and nine, bro. Why Yo. am I getting licked yeah, down? Well, yeah, that's with crazy. That? But I mean, listen, it had to get us on the straight and narrow. Yes, but I don't think it has to be that violent to he the was, point where you're making kids lay. You, have you seen those yeah. those where it's like oh, they're, they're making oh, lay on the table oh, and it hit you? My friend, they, they did that to my friend. Oh my god! Have you ever seen what? It's him. So social worker, they laid my friend down on the table, <laughs> and they were whipping his palm, <laughs> and dust was coming down <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> That is crazy. Um, that's trauma. That's trauma. Yeah. It's not trauma. It's it trauma. Discipline. No, you're not Because around. I remember. Exactly. Because <laughs> I feel like there's, there's, uh -huh. there's a difference between discipline and abuse, okay. right? That there's a very thin line. I. No, I'm, I'm not it a complete the scenario. However, it's still no, no, trauma. Yeah. No, 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 it is. Something. No, no, yeah. it doesn't have to be that extreme for I, me to learn my time tables. But no, no, because no, maybe it. your the way you're teaching me, I cannot understand. But so know, how about I adapt your teaching style for everybody so that we yeah, can all understand? That's the English teacher speaking right now. That's who you are. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm imagining as an adult now. Yeah, I'm I'm really right. with Mister Ndovu. Because if your yes. child, <laughs> if my <laughs> child was getting laid down to get licked, now Would teacher we must fight that? because no, there's no, no, no. I, I to that level. Yeah, I laying get it. on a table yeah, and lay down, man. If it wasn't for I Mr. Joe, I think maybe it makes no. more sense to do that at, at home. home. No, no I but think it makes more sense school. to do it in front of the class. That way, you are not. <gasps> Failing you can't beat the stupidity. If you don't understand something, you don't. You have to find a mm -hmm. way guys, to make the child understand. understand. Exactly. You, no, no, I understand that, what you're saying. English, these are English oh, concepts. No, this, no, this is very <laughs> British. No, no, it's all right. No, I understand. No, but no. Let me tell you something, right? There's this guy who called him Mungwa. This guy. Hey. <laughs> no, he was so serious about yeah. that. Yeah. He was so serious about it. What the fuck is that? No, it's <laughs> Mr. Waka, bro. I need you guys to be no. serious. Okay. Mr. Waka, do you know what I used to do? What? So you'll teach for half an hour, right? You have to lift up a desk like this. <laughs> what? A desk? Yeah. Waka, bro. Just because you make noise. I will love you, Lizard. Sure. It goes half an hour, bro. After that, my age. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, guys, that is crazy. Apart. However, does, does that not sound insane to you? But yeah, but one because actually, I think he's, he's still here. I think no, but you guys, see? we are we're not really understanding these guys. Discipline, bro. Think about it on a grown person's like right now, we are in growth. <laughs> the kids yeah. were naughty, so the kids were naughty. Up. <laughs> and on top of that, you've left home, it's stressful. You must you release told them your do stress. The no, 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 no. Let's let's not do that. The no, 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 no. What we're no, what, what we're not gonna do no, no, is be irresponsible no, no, with that no, no, word. Okay. No. I yeah, yeah, there is no, no, no teacher. No. The no, worst thing, there the is no thing, teacher that home. is taking out their stress on okay, my children. Okay, okay, okay. Absolutely not. Okay, no, 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 but if they're not getting beat at home, mate, leave the discipline to me. Okay, the the worst thing is physical discipline should never be done by a teacher. Yeah, but but the worst thing is you go home if you report. No, but no, but if you're saying I got beats because I didn't pass, can we find alternatives? What about beating somebody who keeps on repeat um failing repeatedly? Clearly something up events. Back Clearly then, something not working. Didn't work. And yeah. then, uh, there, then there's people with learning difficulties. Once you say a beat before you even learning difficulties. Why? How how do you deal with someone with learning difficulties? There's no such thing as learning difficulties because from, in, in, in Africa. Oh yeah, um, that's okay. that's there a different is. topic. That's no. like mental health. <laughs> no, like that, that's that's yeah, that's two even, different things. Well, right, so learning difficulties and mental health. No, okay, different things. Not learning disability. Sorry, learning difficulties still that doesn't exist in Africa. 
it exists, but we don't acknowledge Africa, it. We just don't have the right Africa, in ways to deal in with it. Learning difficulty mm. is Ubuvila. Am I wrong right. or am I wrong? Okay. That's it. That's, that was an excuse, though. That yeah. was our excuse Back then. to cover But up. I'm saying with the knowledge we have now, though. With the knowledge we have now. And, and also, I feel like we still can't be making excuses for the same things now. Yeah. But I, in my opinion, anyway... In terms of um, education, in terms of, let's say, the education ministers, the da da da, that's your responsibility to make sure that all kids are being taught at the level they are, number one. Number two, we're finding alternative ways to train our teachers to be better equipped for our kids. Otherwise, that's how you find a, a grade five still at a grade one level. Why? Because the teacher cannot help them in the way they need to be helped. Yeah. Your, t- your child has learning difficulties. Either they have, um, dyslexia all these different things but the teacher Could is ignorant or sometimes sometimes the child yeah, might not yeah, even have a difficulty yeah no i'm saying Some, i'm saying in, yeah. in the in the instance the hold on no i'm saying in the no instance in the instance though, <laughs> in the instance okay. your child has a learning difficulty surely the teacher should be equipped oh, bravo, bravo. to deal with that with the with the knowledge we have now not back in the day with the knowledge we have now should our teachers not be equipped to help our students, help our children. I feel like teachers should be able to have multiple ways of being able to teach one thing to multiple kids. And that's all I'm saying. Because one person might be auditory, another person might be very visual and practical, one person might be theoretical, but you can't teach one method to everyone. Thank you. I was a very much uh, a practical learner than a... A theoretical learner mm-hmm. that makes sense i need to see it happen mm. so i can process it rather mm. than you telling me or me reading it when i read it it's not going to process yeah that's how i was as a kid for sure so, and not everyone is like that no, so we need everyone. to do better yeah. we need to do better but my thing is this regardless are they still beating kids yes in africa now yes very much so because here i hear here if you touch a kid hey you're done now. Yeah. Yeah. So, dear parents. I, 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 yeah. For me, <laughs> it's definitely, as a teacher, it's not your business to be touching somebody else's child. I, I don't think that's really your place. I think find alternative ways to, I guess, punish them or have consequences for their actions. And dear, then you yeah. leave it to the parent to say, this is what your child's been doing. Either they were naughty or they're failing or X, Y, Z. Do you know what? Have the parents deal with that. You give me teacher vibes, Vele, when... Mm. <laughs> I mean, I could be a teacher. Yeah, you give me teacher vibes. So how do you discipline a naughty student who is telling you right now, teach me, teach me, teach me? Teach how me. how would I discipline what? Just teach me. We're in class now. Teach me. Um, okay. Depends on the Ten so minus four. Shut how up, do tech. you? Shut up. <laughs> okay, thank you, Xavier. You Shut will be. Up. Oh, hey, Miss, you're pouring us. All right. Boring. Okay, that's fine. I'm pouring you. Please get out of my class. Get out of my class, Xavier. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Get out of your class. Get out of your class. Get out of your class. All right. <laughs> okay, do you know what? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, for the for the rest of the class, hey, yo, I'm not. Until Xavier first, leaves bro. my class, we we're not football? learning. Until football? Xavier yeah, leaves my know. class, the whole class is not learning. Do you know what? Thank you. Miss, uh, she, you're she, so lonely. She she yeah. Long yeah. Team. Look at you. Oh, she yeah. a long not team, me though. being lonely and not having no. a husband. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would be that yeah. teacher telling you, it yeah. doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I still get paid. Yeah. I still get paid. You see what I'm saying? I what I'm saying paid. is what I'm saying. Yeah. No but sense of control of the situation. Either way, I'm still getting paid as a teacher. That would be my response. But one thing about it, you will you will leave the class. Because when things are escalated, mm-hmm. you get her teachers involved. You get the parents involved. Oh, That's yes. fine. My business is not to sit here and police you, police your behavior for a whole hour. Because you're you're being you're being selfish for the rest of the class. Because if a teacher now says, I've I'm not teaching anymore, at some point, and I promise you, at some point, students get to a point where they're like, Okay, cool, we're bored now. Because you sit there for an hour licking it in. No, okay. At some well, point, someone's gonna say, "Hey, Xavier, liar, man." Okay. Look where, at where none of your your friends uh, ever like, "Hey, bro, you're taking it too far. Relax." Hey, bro, no, the no, class no, is done. Can... The class is done. Yeah. What I'm saying mm-hmm. is, we we'll go for the next mm-hmm. class. For you, you yes. say you wanna be a teacher. That's your no, I'm not. Like yeah. a profession. You like right. oh, I love being a teacher. Right. And you, you actually, <laughs> you actually been there, and then 
But this is what I'm saying, though. Again, I think we are we are unfair to teachers sometimes in the sense that is again parents need to take responsibility to you, as they say it takes a village. Yeah, the teacher alone cannot be expected to police your children, teach them, raise them. You know. Teach them life lessons. That's mm. too much. They're yeah. only for some of these teachers. They're only with your child for maybe an, an hour for maths. That's true. Up until next week, so you can't expect them to have five different teachers, five different value systems coming from five to ten different teachers in a week. You, as a parent, need to make sure that your Still. child is behaving. Because I know for facts, my mom was making sure that I was behaving in school. Should she ever hear that I'm misbehaving? Yeah, it's trouble at home. Okay. You know, so in order for our kids, in my in my opinion, in order for kids to excel in school, the parents have to be actively involved. Can we talk about the actual educational side? Because I feel like as Africans, we are quite we excel educationally mm-hmm. um, compared to here in the UK. I've compared like in regards to ambition, and not just ambition, but like the what do you call it, the curriculum. That yeah. they have and stuff like that. Compared to home, I feel like Africans or the educational system at home is way more instilled to make us smarter because of competition as well. Because we all have that drive to want to succeed and get that job that we're studying for because we know how hard the competition is. Whereas here, it's not the same. But, but this is what I was saying uh, even earlier with, with the Cambridge certificate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back home, it's like, oh, yeah. whenever you come in, you have to work uh, in the sense of, like, people, they expect, they think you're actually dumber than, then you find mm, out, yeah. actually, you know, your class is actually higher. Yeah. Yep. And then you just have to prove it. And then after that, obviously, with your English, if it's like mine, <laughs> I feel if you have good maths, and then later on, then, oh, oh, this guy is like, he's smart. That's why they're surprised. Because it- and like, ah, we're working how? so hard for it. Yeah, but by then you're like, okay, I'm living from grade five here, grade seven, I'm just... Yeah, mm-hmm. passing. Mm-hmm. Oh. There, I was mm-hmm. done there, here. Yeah. <laughs> here, you do it, bitch. No. That's true. Yeah, I mean, that's one, very... I don't know. That's true. I mean, um, I think for me, um, it's interesting as well because I, I remember how neat... And beautiful my handwriting was. I, I don't know what happened over time. But they came. They took my handwriting. And they changed it. So with that being said. I think every African used to write neatly. I don't know about your guys' handwriting. You can do a writing test if you like. But especially when I'm not quite sure. <laughs> at the moment. I don't think. But I think yours is still in, instilled in you. hundred percent. But me, my my handwriting, um, I think I'm quite traumatized by that. They took it away from me because I really used to write neatly and we were taught to write a certain way. And when I came to London, I was told that I had to join all my words. You know, every letter has to be joined. You can't space out letters. No, you... cursive. So cursive writing. Cursive. Yeah. Cursing. Cursive. 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 Oh, that's you what see, they, yeah, 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 that's I remember. What they I remember that word. They used to talk about cursing. Mm-hmm. You, you see, when you receive a, a certificate, let's say, um, yeah, but why, why, why is there a system? It's almost like, like a signature, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, that's how we were taught to all, write. And yeah, now my handwriting people. is cursing as well. Uh, no, cursive, <laughs> not cursing. It's not. Uh, I, I couldn't make that. Like, but my handwriting thing is coming down. Yeah, I used to write so nice, man. Now I'm having to type a lot more. It's frustrating. But um, yeah, the 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 schooling system, guys, is is interesting. It's um, it's funny how these experiences weirdly have almost yeah. shaped us. Yeah. And I think without those experiences, I'm not asking you now why they didn't beat you because you needed to be beat. I was a, <laughs> I was a good student. 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 I swear. No, I, I had that. Of, of course, I had that. I experienced all of that. Did I experienced all of it. No, thank God. Hey, thank the Lord. 
boarding no, school? No, I didn't go to boarding Ooh. school. I'm the only one that went boarding school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, I've yeah. never I've never heard anyone say boarding school was lit. All I've heard is oh, trauma stories. It's a blessing and a curse. I've my heard boarding the school the is blessing and a curse. Really? Did oh, you, my. Yeah, but did you go to Where, an expensive school? boarding school? No, I went. I don't know. I don't know the price. What's the name? But is in a good... Quality Wait, boarding school. At the time, I don't know. I went to boarding school for like a year and a bit, if not two years, two a few yeah. terms. Yeah. And um, yeah, I yeah, I went to my my ruler. A lot of people was like, "Where's my ruler?" It was a primary boarding school. Okay. Um, oh, primary. Yeah, Ooh, my ruler. Chow. It wasn't bad, but it was. I, I had a great time. You had a good then. time. You know, because remember, I, I, at home, I never used to really. You know, so when I went mm. out, I was like, ah, <laughs> people, friends. What are you saying, my ruler? Yeah, is it school? My ruler. Everything I'm a ruler. is alcohol. Yeah. No, I never say that. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm like, yeah. Like, so I, not like, yeah, I had a good time in school. I had a good time. Yeah. Um, shifting, and we're gonna come back into like experiences and understanding mm-hmm. and personal growth and all these different things. I'm sure Davengo, you've got a lot more to say in, in regards to your process and transitioning to no, the funny thing is right. I've just said that it's like um after a while, after I came to this country, slowly positioned and, uh, you know, slowly you meet people and then you, you're still yourself, but then you, how do you explain it? Yourself. You are that? Oh, I say this. Yourself. And then you, you find yourself, okay, we punch with the land that, but you still maintain yourself things. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like you're on a. You're assimilating, you're adjusting. Yeah, that is very true. Exactly. Look at this one. <laughs> Just look at the head. <laughs> yeah. The head says it's old. What does the head say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I see what you mean in terms exactly. of there's well, part of your culture you still hold. You, you, you will never yeah. see yeah. anyone from me wearing a head like this. A head like that. <laughs> yeah. Still wrapping home. There's something that actually, by the, the same time, you actually still. mix everything. Yeah. You know, that, the thing is, slowly we we create a different um, culture or environment yeah. for everyone. Like, okay, cool. Um, now, we start mixing things without even knowing. We've created a space or a culture in London or England where even when, when everyone comes from SA or wherever they come, when they come here, they're like, oh, shit, uh, there's a different culture. These guys, they're, they're doing this or they're doing this. They talk like this, they do this. It's like a, it's a subculture it's a that we create. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know, but we're still like we still ourselves. Ourselves, yeah. It's um, like you you have that South yeah. South African element, but you yeah. still but keep still, your okay. yeah. um your British yeah. culture as well, or you still but, have those yeah. that is the Marvin culture and the principles and the customs, yeah. but a there's a part of it now that's very British in your views, yeah. in your behavior, sometimes in your value system as well yeah it's dope it's dope um even for me i still think growing up here i remember there was one time like uh, when i first met steph after you know because i went to the same school with steph london Mm -hmm. and she was like in the year below me and i remember how she was used to reference me back in school Versus to even like the first time I seen her up, you know, since she's gone and done whatever she's done, big things. Oh, you know, that the African guy, you know, the the guy who's always repping Africa. And that's always been me repping who I am and where I'm from. So I think it's 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 important that that Africa in us is forever shining through us and you know, we're always giving back that energy and embracing who we are, not only just by being here, have we just, I mean, I'm British now, yeah, you know what I mean? But deep down, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm giving Zimbabwe forever. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> always, I'm always, I'm giving Zimbabwe, always, I'm giving Zimbabwe, I'm Zimbabwe the whole night. period, <laughs> forever and always, man. So, um, quick one on Ama Piano. 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 Steadily, steadily, heavily, we're getting lit. I'm a, Piano, steadily, steadily, heavily, we're getting lit. Okay, yes. Um, I'm a piano. 
Is Amapiano music a true representation of South African culture and identity, or was it influenced too heavily by other international genres? No. No. I'll tell you why. What are we saying no to? No, it's, it's never. Let me tell you why. I'm a piano as it is. Mm -hmm. um, I used to listen to Kwaito back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like late 90s. You know, if you listen to do albums and all them, just the sound. Even now, now, if you listen to um, a lot of songs, mm -hmm. literally, they're Kwaito songs, but just remixed. Right. And it's just Kwaito itself. Mm hmm Quite all the blown up so much if the internet or the me social media was the thing. It was, it was the way it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm telling you, like, um, people don't understand. Nineties. If you listen to nineties, quite old, coming early to uh, early two thousands, the sound just a, a little bit diff different BPMs. It's the same, but if you listen properly. Even the, the the songs, the lyrics, whatever they office now, they 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 just like remixing. It's it's just for me, it's a graduation of quiet. Yeah, I appreciate Agreed. what you're saying, but just to add on top of that, I I I think otherwise, because we had better music at the time. What's better music? We had R and B, bro. I was in this like right now. Apart from Ama Piano, what other genre is really creating? I know those genres have their fans, but I'm talking like on an urban space as us black people, apart from Afrobeats doing what they're doing, yes, hip hop here and there, but apart from Ama Piano right now, what other genre is really of great music? Yes, people are entitled to listen to what they listen to. I'm not disputing mm -hmm. other people's genres. No, you're not listening to my question. You're not listening to my to my point. What I'm saying is, I hear what you're saying. I'm quiet or just needed social. Da, 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 da. Yes, but no, because at the time, it's like Mary J. Blige, but yeah. we had the Mariahs. We had big boy music that need, didn't even need social media because it was on TV. Had you put Quieto and and those guys on TV at the same time? It wouldn't have resonated wouldn't have the same because the people wouldn't people, have been ready for it. For, yeah, people would not even understand. Why would you want okay, to listen you know, to yeah. what he yeah. said? I, yeah. I agree with it. what he yeah. said. It would. I agree with what he says. I agree with what like, you saying, but you, I feel like, is more specific to remixes. Whereas with your opinion about R&B, I feel like it's more related to the melodic side of I'm a piano. I personally feel like piano stems from house. Where? Where? Yeah, deep house that yeah. has just been gentrified to sound and evolved, different. Yeah. yeah, and it will always evolve. It will know. I don't even feel like sometimes it, it goes through waves. There's an algorithm. Right. right now, it's very international. You know, that's how we have Amapiano, yeah. piano, and all of that. So it's very upbeat, very fast paced now. And but even that, the I don't beginning like of piano, piano was not as fast paced as it is now. Yeah, you know. I feel like it will slowly transition back into the base of Deep House. And then maybe even go into... Because um, right now people are collaborating with the Caribbean side. You know, so it might even transition into the Caribbean side. Do you get what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I get what you mean. I think there's now even sub-genres of a piano. Because for some of these sounds, specific, and I'm speaking specifically to the Ama Piano that's coming from the Afrobeat artist, yeah. in my opinion, some of it is not really Ama Piano. It's, not. it's being branded as Ama Piano because somebody 100%. decided to add Log Drum. Yep. Log Drum doesn't make any song Ama Piano. And I think really and truly it is a subgenre where it's, it's Afrobeat, Ama Piano, mashed together and put together to create this new sound yeah that's hence why you're saying about it's very fast paced yeah but if you listen to the authentic ama piano artist that's... that melodic slow yep. jazzy piano um, rhythm yep. is what they're creating you know you've got incredible artists like gosazana daughter you've got um shasha you've yeah. got the you know the the greats like 
oh gosh, my mind has gone blank. But you know, they they yeah. still creating authentic on my piano. I don't think yeah. that sound is going anywhere. I think, however, there is the subgenres which are being created and unfortunately yeah. are being dubbed on my piano, which in my opinion would dilute the sound and yeah. make it something completely different. Hundred percent. There's a blueprint there. Yeah. That they're recycling into a different genre every time. Yeah. That's what it typically is. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Which, would you, would you yes. say that, um, well, should, because of what you guys are saying as well, do you, um, do you think I'm a piano artist and producer should prioritize commercial success and mainstream appeal? Or should they just focus on pre preserving the authenticity of the sound? I believe in preservation. Yes. Personally speaking. How do you grow? Um, that's the problem. So I feel like preservation is what actually got us recognized. The way that piano was initially got us recognized. Over time, it's going to inevitably, it's out of our power, it will change whether we like it or not because someone else will want to combine another genre or culture in it because they loved the authenticity of the first one. Right. Of what they heard. What can I say? Yeah. There was a tweet by Sway Lee. Uh, a oh, few yeah. months ago, oh, yeah. where Sway Lee was like, shout out to, I'm a piano, yeah, Nigeria, the Nigerians. I'm pulling yeah. up, you know, yeah. and that got South Africa really mad. <laughs> yeah, it did. But what Sway Lee then later on went and said, he said, sorry, I was just saying this because I was introduced to I'm a piano by through the Nigerians, yeah, a Nigerian person. So the question is, should ama piano artists and producers producers Pro prioritize commercial success and mainstream appeal or should they focus on preserving the authenticity of the sound? Ama piano is too young, in my opinion. I feel like ama piano is too young as a genre to already be be getting remixed to the point where people think it belongs to the West Africans. If in in terms of like it's important we preserve it now because it may get out of hand mm -hmm. to the point where it's a genre we don't recognize, like which we're already, already which we're already getting there. Yeah. So if if people like Sway Lee are saying, um, almost associating it with Nigeria, that tells you a lot. Yeah. And if we take Afrobeats for example, they didn't start adapting the sound up until the last maybe four years, but for a long time they kept it authentic. Hence why they've been able to keep yep. hold of it for so long. Yep. Now, if what I'm a, what the what I'm a piano producers and artists are doing is that yes, commercial success is great, but it may be taken away from you if you're not able to keep hold of its authenticity. Where if you're just giving away um, and making it that it's it's a free for all in in the sense of like additions in the sense of remixes in the sense of adding other genres to it because again you're now creating a new sound which is not a piano and then what we will have which i can foresee is the face of a piano not being somebody from south africa which they will be mad at i can foresee a future where faces the the ashakes of the world will be the a piano artist and i think respectfully not to disrespect, disrespect any South Africans, Asha K is actually the face of Ama Piano as we stand. Um, I say that because there was also a, 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 a podcast that I watched, I just saw a highlight of it where Mr. Jazzy Q was talking to Young Stan mm -hmm. and, young, and he was revealing that to Young Stan and saying, yo, but you know, the word is Asha K is the number one Ama Piano artist, but you can't fight the numbers. Yeah. I feel but like we should have less collaboration. Yeah, personally. But is, is what yeah, Ashake producing on a piano? No. No, no, no. It's, it's all no, no, he is. It's, not, it's like is it is. It? That that sound is it's like the new NSG song now. It's every song that is coming out right now I'm a piano. has got an Ama Piano Lokdra element to it yeah but that's what i was saying earlier about the adaptation of ama piano to now a sound where you don't feel like because the real authentic ama piano listeners or the ones who were down with the get down when it was still a fresh new baby they're like we don't really like this new sound because it doesn't feel authentic to what we created it doesn't feel authentically authentically 
Yanos, as they would call it, right? It feels like Afrobeats mixed with Ama Piano together. But, okay, personally, I think with artists, right, you should chase both. I'm 50-50. Mm -hmm. One, chase both in the sense of like, okay, cool. Um, make money as much as you can. At the same time, if you can, at some point as well, um, um, preserve piano and then make it, you know, evolve as you, as you want it to from yeah. the gas. Just continue doing that. But at least, I think at least for me, as long as make us they make more money they actually they're evolving as people yeah than other people making more money than uh, the people actually make which they will so tell me tell me why you think they need to preserve it purely for the fact of like recognition and in because you know how afrobeats is very implemented in the west african side like we all know nigeria ghana the it should stay like how Afrobeats is with that side of Africa. It should be like that with Amapiano, with Southern Africa. Yeah. And it's it's getting out of hand. Like it's just very, di it's getting more and more diluted as time goes by. Very quickly too. And I, I feel like personally speaking, in my opinion, that we should have less collaborations with people outside of our region. Just have more collaborations within our region because it all stemmed from the original piano secondly hold it there major league djs have gone they've crossed over yep they swam over the ocean and they arrived because they are playing authentic music to an audience that is not of authenticity ttc what do they do? They begin to collaborate with the people that they're playing for the most. Question Which is mark. who? I'm not, I can't even say the people because the people that they're collaborating with are not people. But that... it's more commercial, isn't it? Yes, commercial. So, yeah. Okay, what... so it's more house music. Not house music. I'm a piano, but they're collaborating it's more with... Pop. Pop, yeah. Okay. Pop stuff. Give give us an example of. Yeah. I don't know. They've just released a song with some guy from UK. I posted it today. I forgot the name. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the guy, but some guy from UK and. Yeah, I think now all, I all think those that... things I think are great. The collaborations are great for the individual artists. However, it's not great for the culture. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing for the individual where, artists you... who are able to get the bag, secure the bag, and you know collaborate with Afrobeat artists, collaborate with pop artists, British artists. That's absolutely amazing. Add add the um the Afrobeats to it. Add pop to it. Make it its own genre for the individuals. It's absolutely great in the long term it will not be great for the genre as a whole. How'd you get it the will, in my opinion, it will um, almost hinder the growth of the authentic Ama Piano sound because there's too many subgenres too quickly. Yeah. So can we talk about how Black Coffee managed to make collaborations whilst he was up and coming and still at his peak and still keep it authentic to the type of sound he makes that came from home example when he was in the uk and i'm only going to talk about the ones that we all know when he collaborated it. with georgia smith we still know authentically that the south african sound it's just coming from a british vocalist really and truly yeah no i agree i agree but then when it comes to now piano and collaborating with other people it's no longer authentic piano it's more of that it's, it's, it's afro piano else. Yeah. Afro piano, Afro pop piano. That's what I mean. Is this trying to keep it within the same pocket? But shouldn't we embrace that the sound is that strong to have different branches? Because the tree doesn't grow and just have one branch. It's not a, it's not a tree that has one branch. Oh, yeah. 100%. But but then, isn't a tree more beautiful will. when it has several Absolutely. branches? You just have to know that there is risk to what you're doing. I think because now everything is moving so quickly, it's only in the next five to 10 years we'll be able to tell 
what happened with Ama Piano. We could either be, you know, having these conversations in 10 years time and saying, wow, what happened to Ama Piano? Or it's now a sound that we don't recognize. Yeah. Yo, guys, there's so much to talk about. The vibe, the open panel. I don't know what to call it, but Oksalayo, we have got a lot of unbedded conversations. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And unrevealed. Unrevealed conversations. We've got so much to expect, right? But it's, it's, it's beyond oh, us. That's a new word. What does that mean? I've never it's heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean? Words, just Teach me. It's giving, it's giving Zimbabwe. It's just giving know. Zimbabwe. <laughs> just know it's giving Shout Zimbabwe. People, um, but yeah, um, this is just an idea that we're bringing to life and we hope to engage in more conversations. We've got so much to talk about and I believe that the vibe is truly here for as long as we are all alive. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to know that the vibe is not us. You are the vibe because you continue to vibe with us. So, join us again, maybe another time. Yes, sir. I don't know. Another time? It's we'll never, be back. It's never be another time. It's going to be another time, definitely. I'm sorry. Our brother is you had <laughs> just arrived. Agazenzi, he doesn't do himself, but it is what it is. Shout out to Natasha, Natasha. Is that Natasha, Natasha? <laughs> Natasha. No, it's Natasha, Natasha. <laughs> Natasha. No, Shout out to Natasha. And Norma Noms. Shout out to Norma Noms and the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, star of the show. Superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, feel the groove, feel the vibe. Your host.